Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So on a previous video, I actually brought a brand new Windows laptop and I put Linux on it. And so if you have not seen that video, I will leave it in the description area below. And so in general, the whole story was I initially needed a Windows laptop to run some programs for work. And this is what I started off with. I started off with this Dell. Basically, it's a netbook. And most of my work is done through a browser and other apps, so I didn't think I'd need a lot of power. But under Windows 10, this laptop is practically unusable. And so I tried to just have this just to run Windows programs. So what I ended up having to do is actually go out there and buy another Windows laptop. But this time, since I did have more power with this machine, I could go ahead and do what I do on my desktop right now, which is I run Linux as my main operating system, Linux Mint, and then I have Windows 10 running in a virtual machine. And so that's exactly what I did here. So here is Linux Mint, and right here is Windows 10 in a virtual machine. So that means I'm still able to enjoy all the benefits and user experience of Linux Mint, which I absolutely love, but still being able to run Windows to where I could do work whenever I need it. And so this is an option that I'm so happy that worked out so far. But I kind of wanted to give my thoughts and an update on what it's like to actually use a Linux laptop. In this case, it's a very budget laptop. And then some of the things that I'm not too happy with at this point in terms of the things that I need it for. And so this laptop is actually an HP laptop. It is a very low-end model. So it's approximately $300. It has an AMD A6 dual-core processor. 4 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte of storage, which is great. And so this is by no means a powerhouse. But in terms of the work that I needed to do, most of what I do is on the web, is through the browser for digital marketing. This is perfect for that. Now the other type of work that I need to do, which is content creation, this is not so great for it. And so before I get into just the general of what it does well and what it doesn't, let me show you what it does well hardware-wise. And so for such a cheap laptop, and this is a trend that's been going on a while now, it gives you a lot of ports. You know, so I got all my USB here, plus an Ethernet cable jack, which I absolutely love. And then on this side, it has a SD card slot, another USB port, plus an optical drive as well. For all the people who still have optical drives, it's a DVD writer. And this is one thing I really appreciate about these lower end laptops because most laptops nowadays, they're all about being ultra thin. And the problem with that is basic things that I think, like an Ethernet port jack, are no longer available. And finding ones with optical drives is even more rare, even in more expensive gaming laptops as well. So hardware features is something I really do appreciate about this, especially at this price point. Now, in terms of the actual software and everything that's included, obviously this is Linux Mint. And so everything that I need is already here and so I have the same programs that I have on my Linux desktop and as I said a little bit earlier a lot of my work is for digital marketing and so all I primarily need is the browser a few programs and then obviously having Windows 10 in there that will allow me to run programs that requires Windows and so all those things are great and so like 90% of everything that I need this laptop does the place where it's lacking is on the other type of work that I do, which is obviously what I'm doing right now. It's content creation. So if you're trying to do 4K on this, you can pretty much forget about that. It can't even play 4K content at all. It just stutters a lot. Uh, 1080p, it is okay. So basically, I can edit some videos as long as it's at 1080p and as long as I'm willing to deal with the jerkiness and also the time it takes to process. So definitely not the best all-in-one solution for me in order for me to get something like that I'm gonna have to go a lot higher and for me I'm pretty much planning to get a gaming laptop and the reason I want a gaming laptop is because not only of the hardware you know that's involved it's very powerful but also the hardware features like all those ports you know I don't want to have to buy a lot of dongles and adapters to actually get my computer to work and then with all the extra horsepower that I have later it'll be a fully complete portable desktop in a laptop and then for me most importantly it is a Linux laptop <laughs> which uh, is something that I will always have because I cannot go back to having Windows as my main operating system 
Uh, I did try that with this uh, Dell netbook and it completely failed. And so now I know that not to do that anymore. <laughs> so I'm gonna stick with my Linux laptop and have Windows running in a virtual machine. So that way I get the best of what Linux offers and still use Windows where it makes sense. So that is my update on my Linux laptop, formerly a Windows 10 laptop. And this is pretty much for anybody who's looking for an option like I am and who don't wanna break the bank. So like I said, this is about $300. If most of what you're doing is web-based, you're not doing a lot of content creation, especially not 4K, then I think this is a perfect machine for a lot of people looking for that. So if you had any thoughts on anything I talked about today, or maybe you have your own stories of having your Linux laptop being converted from a Windows laptop, then uh, put that in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.